How were you selected to be in the TA originally? I, I wasn't selected. I just volunteered, and, and, and I was accepted. You know, there was no, there was no sh difficulty about it. What training did you undertake when you joined the TA? Well, it was we, we used to have one night a week here, and we. But I would have a platoon then, you see, and and I was meant to be training them. It wasn't so much officers' training, but we we um, got experience in in lecturing and training these fellows and um, then we'd have weekends and of course a fortnight a, a year at camp but the 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 uh, na national service men who were in the TA by law had to be given the, f the, 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 the f two weeks off by their employers but because I was a volunteer, my my uh, then co um, chairman um, said that he would give me an extra week's holiday. So I had three weeks holiday, providing one week was spent at. TA. And I think I know. I think actually I had two weeks holiday and one week was spent at TA. We had a fortnight's camp, didn't we? Yes, we had a fortnight's camp, and I got three weeks. And, uh, but um, uh, non-volunteers would get the whole time off. They'd have their full holiday and the TA. And, and we'd go down and shoot at Waldershot and do exercises and various things. And then we'd have, we'd have officers' weekends only. There's a th the things we used to have in those days called toots. It's full of, the army's full of initials. I don't understand the modern ones, I have to say. I don't, they're very complicated. And toots stood for tactical exercise without troops. T E W T, and there was the, the, some wags said there was also another one called a jute, jungle exercise without trees. <laughs> the, the boys come up with some very good remarks and things like that, and but um, we do officers training and they were they were quite informative because we'd had syndicates of uh, eight officers and in teams and we'd answer questions and we'd be given maps and we did on the South Downs and, and the picture was the enemy was invading through Brighton or something, we'd have to defend the, the hills and so on and it was all an exercise in, in how you control your artillery and all that stuff and we'd do that and, um, and then we had uh, as I say, once a week once a week we were here, and I think, I'm not sure we didn't have an officer's dinner night once a month, I can't really remember. But that was in here, in this tower. But of course it was the depot of the, of the regular regiment. So people used to live in that barrack block now, which is where the jewel house is, and they do their training on the square with all the public and things, and they go down to Essex to fire on the ranges there. Very unsuitable place for the training depot. What kind of training did you do at the tower? Well, this was what we did in the evening was teaching people um, uh, radio and uh, stripping weapons and putting them together again. And there was a miniature range also down in the in the moat down the back here, um, which we could use for firing small bore, you know, two two rifles. And then, you know, we had we had a, a shooting team, and they would go off for week, for Sundays and Saturdays on their own down to Aldershot to shoot. And so there were activities. Different sections of the of the battalion would be doing things. Every we didn't all go off on one weekend. You know, the the, the, the anti tank guns would go off and do an exercise on their own one weekend, and another the signal section would go off and do an exercise, and so on. And that we, we did the stuff we trained here was map reading and all the things you can do in a, in a building. I mean, you can't do camouflage and digging trenches and stuff. Ta wouldn't have liked it. But it was, it was that sort of training. But all, all the fellows had been in the army. Now, I will tell you something interesting. I think it's interesting. You asked me about things. In 1951, which was my first camp, because I joined in end of '50. October, November. Um, the first camp was in Norfolk, and 
there was a, a, a call up of what they called Z reservists. And Z reservists were chaps who'd been in the army from 1945 to 48. And they, were, they didn't have any obligation to do TA, they were on the reserve. And it, the, the military authorities thought it was a good thing to polish up their skills by calling them up. And they were pretty resentful. And that, that, this is when the leadership came in. You had to sort of say, well, you're only in for a fortnight. Why didn't you enjoy it rather than you know, make a fuss? And actually, after a couple of days of polishing up weapon training and drill and stuff, they all showed that they were very well-trained soldiers and they were very amusing. And um, we went to camp, about 900 strong, which was an absolute full battalion in those days, and we had 30 eight people in the officer's mess and the sergeant's mess had 80 sergeant's warrant officers and all the beer for the battalion went through the sergeant's mess accounts and I think I, I, I might be wrong on thing I think we had 5,000 gallons or something through the, battal- the, the, the sergeant's mess in a fortnight which is quite a lot of beer because it's 5 is it five eights, isn't it? Five, 40 40,000 pints and for a thousand men in 14 days so 14,000 40, it was about three pints a man per day average but some of these sergeants and sergeant majors could tip it back I mean really they would drink the ocean dry and they were extremely amusing and, and, and wonderful fellows and it was a good camp and the training went well and as I say after the first three days all these Bolchy chaps knuckled down and they were very good. Probably the best camp I ever had, really. What other yeah. camps did you participate in? Well, we went, Norfolk was one, and we went down to Senny Bridge in, in uh, Wales and uh, oh, Salisbury Plain, we've done, and uh, we did one down in Worcestershire or Gloucestershire. There's a civil defence we were doing, I don't know, when it was. When the atom bomb was rather looming, we were there doing civil defence training. That wasn't so much fun. We had another one down at um, Folkestone. And uh, one the funny little story, we all had different jobs, you see, as well as being sort of ordinary platoon commanders. There was somebody looking after, say, officers' mess silver. And one of the jobs was officers' mess food. And, and I did it one year. And you were responsible for buying the extra food that the officers ate, which they paid for. I mean, there was army rations, but it could be topped up with sort of luxuries, if you like. And the, uh, the, uh, the, they paid, and we had dinners for other regiments and the general and things, so that had to be organised. One of my successors, one of the most unmilitary person, man, who ever got a commission... How he did, I don't know. Anyway, he became officer's mess uh, food member, and it was his job to buy the food for these dinners and whatever we had. And we had a dinner organised for, say, 36. So he went off to buy some frozen peas. You won't believe it, he came back with 36 two-ounce packets of peas. 36 two-ounce packets of peas. <laughs> so there you are. <laughs> it was quite amazing. <laughs> and he spent twice as much as he should have done. But um, anyway, the, we had a lot of funny people. You know, there were some, some very good and some funny and not so good. But in the main, it was quite enjoyable. And, and all the National Service chaps did their five years, so you know, a lot of these chaps stayed until 1967-ish. And as, as the National Service finished in... No, 1957 it finished, it, didn't it? Yes. So we had them for five years after that, because they had that obligation until about 62, and then everybody was a volunteer. And we had, we had a camp in Alderney. That was rather fun. We went off there. Um, we went off by from Weymouth in, in destroyers and um, the Navy 
um, I mustn't be too rude about the Navy. They, they try their best, but um, they don't like lighting the wick and, until Monday morning, and they like to turn it off under the boiler at noon on Friday. And so we had to wait a uh, weekend until Monday morning when they lit the wick in the boiler and took us across to Alderney. And we, we also had some vehicles on a tank landing craft, which I think was run by the Army at that time, the Royal Army um, Service Corps. Uh, they, these were the big things, you know, the trap doors at the front. And we, had, we were allowed to take uh, three, three, three tonners and a whole lot of quarter tonners of trailers and things. And all our kit, you know, that we needed for training and, and a certain amount of food and things. But we got there at fairly high tide, and they were landing in the beach in the harbour, but the chap didn't want to get stranded. So he signalled all the vehicles off before they, he'd got to the beach. And he said, come on, off with them. And then, and then so they all started the engine, and, and they all drowned. All the vehicles went six feet deep in water, and they weren't, weren't waterproof, so they all drowned. And these, the, the transport section spent the fortnight... Um, stripping all these vehicles down and getting the sand out. That's all they did. Because this chap wanted to get back to England before the tide dropped. And the same when we came back, when we eventually got picked up on the Friday, um, the captain of the ship got us back to Weymouth. First person off was the captain of the ship. He got his bicycle out of a locker by the funnel and the gang way down and he was off. It was about 2 o'clock in the afternoon on a Friday. He was off for the weekend. So they were very much as a mon Monday to Friday operation in the Navy at that time. And uh, we were doing the weekend bits. What do you think was the hardest part of your role in the TA? Oh, uh, well, I, I, uh, I was a company commander. Uh, I, I came as a, as a platoon commander then I became a, a captain and I was second in command of the company and then I got promoted again I became a company commander and by that time the battalion had moved down to Balham and I was left here with the, what was called the tower company and it was a very skeletal company I had the officers and things but not too many men because it's not a very re good recruitment area and um, in the Balham is it is a very hotbed for recruitment. It was in the Royal Fusiliers. So I, I suppose the, the hardest part of the time was sort of whipping up enthusiasm in a rather skeletal company. But um, it, was, it was all enjoyable, really. And then I, then I became second in command of the battalion when we had a succession of um, colonels. Um, regulars, because we were a bit short of um, suitable people to be take over command. We had um, two extremely good ones, and then the third one, who I served under, was a very, very nice chap who shall be nameless because of that machine, but all he wanted was a party. And, uh, it, you know, he, he thought TA was just one long party. And he used to Pier. I ran an exercise behind Sandhurst one weekend and at midnight we were doing patrolling in a training area there in the dark and the first group were coming in at about midnight and the colonel was there with his son and he said how's it going Brian? I said okay he said um, when are you expecting the first lot in? I said oh in about ten minutes he said well I'll wait till they're in and then I'm going off to he always used the expression bash my charpoy Charpoy, I think, is Indian for bed, isn't it? And uh, he'd want to go to bed. So, but all the, we were all up all night, and the other colonels would have been there all night as well. But this one was only interested really in the party, and he wasn't suitable for TA. They didn't. I think the the sergeant's mess didn't care for him. They said rude things about him and meant it, you know. And um, it, it, he was a very nice chap, but he just didn't take it didn't understand the philosophy of the TA. And, you know, you've got to be seen to be there. It's no good. Where's the colonel? Oh, he's in bed while you're out digging a trench in the middle of a soggy, soggy thing. 
you know, it's not good. So, so he, then, then the TA was disbanded, and I, I wasn't, I think I wasn't quite old enough. I know it look, looks funny now, but um, I wasn't old enough to be, be a colonel. That's why we had this chat. I don't know whether I was good enough. I'm not even sure whether I would have been promoted, but I certainly wasn't old enough to get into the area of promotion. So that's why we had a, a final one was a regular colonel.